Brutally honest truth number one, a white coat won't make you happy. I'm a doctor, an anesthesiology resident in New York City, and 10 years ago, I started my pre-med journey at UCLA. Today, I help thousands of pre-meds get into their dream med schools, and I do it primarily by being brutally honest. So here are 10 truths that I wish I knew when I was a pre-med. When I got into my first med school, USC, I thought I'd feel happy. I called my mom, she cried. I called my friends and they cried. But I remember standing on the second floor of our research building, not feeling happy. Maybe it was relief. Maybe I felt numb. In fact, the cognitive dissonance, the difference between how other people were treating me and how I felt inside was so troubling, I started seeing a therapist for it. And look, today, I love my job, and I'm so grateful that I get to help people every day. But I share the story so that you know that there isn't really a finish line. There's nothing that you cross and suddenly everything's over, the champagne pours and the balloon pops. So if you are chasing doctor dreams, make sure that they're yours and make sure to not forget to ask what you want along the way. Really honest truth number two, effort doesn't count, but results do. Pre-meds bust their butts to try and get into med school, but all that effort isn't going to get you where you want if you're digging in the wrong direction. For example, adcoms don't care if you put 2000 hours at a hospital desk doing nothing. They're more impressed by the kid who spent 200 hours connecting hundreds of Vietnamese immigrants to primary care. Impact is the bottom line. And don't forget that effort precedes impact, but you need effort guided by direction, expertise, experience. That's the recipe for success. When I was a pre-med, I never knew how to get there on my own. I had to get advice from upperclassmen and look at real applications, people who actually got into med school. And we have eight full AMCAS applications that have gone into some of the best programs in the country. I know you work hard, so make sure you're using that effort in the right way. Over 18,500 pre-meds are part of our community. To join, click the link in our description box below now. Brutally honest truth number three, med schools can train doctors but they can't make good ones. Every year, there are nearly 5,000 pre-meds who have 3.8 plus GPAs and greater than a 517 MCAT. And for centuries, med schools have taught people medicine, people with way lower than those perfect stats. You can think of med schools as professional science academies, but we've realized that doctors are more than multiple choice questions. Intelligence may open the door, but humility and self-awareness, those are the things that earn you a seat at the table. Those can't be taught, so med schools are searching for those to start. Start. Brutally honest truth number four, you don't know the truth. What you see on Instagram and TikTok aren't real. They're highlights, snippets of people's real lives. Take a look at my TikTok, for example. I got a mask on my double chin and I have a cafeteria lunch lady hairnet. I look like I'm the muffin man. And at 7 p.m., I look kind of depressed because I'm walking home after a long shift where I did really nothing. I still got to eat, I still got to shower, and I still got to study for the patients for the next day. That's what real life looks like. I'm not dressed to the 10, saving patients by day and doing Nobel Prize research by night. I promise you, the truth is way uglier and way closer to your real life than you think. And how would you know that if you hadn't gone through it yourself? I certainly didn't. Experience makes this difficult pre-med journey much easier. And if you're applying to medical school in the coming year or two, you want that experience on your side so you don't make the wrong decisions. Our pre-med Catalyst students have a 100% acceptance rate if they submit their applications on time. That's more than double the national average. And our results are only because we work so closely with our students. In fact, we can only take on four students per month before we're full for the cycle. If you'd be interested in getting into some of the strongest programs in the country, click the application cycle advising link down below now to book a free strategy call before we're full. Really honest truth number five, burning out is not a badge of honor. I've burnt out way too many times in my life, lying horizontal on the couch, looking at the ceiling, just never wanting to do an ounce of work again. But things change and I find that today I burn out much less often. And when I do, I've learned that it's a sign that I'm not protecting what matters most to me. Burning out tells me I'm spending my time on things I truly don't care about. I know this because there are times where I've worked hardest in my life and I wasn't burnt out then. The difference and the reason I was able to put in 100 hour work weeks is that I was doing things I truly cared about. Dan Pink talks about the three factors that make a career satisfying, and those are purpose, autonomy, and mastery. If you feel like what you do matters, if you feel like you're getting better at what you do, and if you feel like you have a choice as to what you do, you will not burn out. So remember that when you're doing things you don't want to, there's nothing worse than trading your identity, your soul for two stupid letters on a medical school degree. Really honest truth, number six, do awesome things, then talk about it. 
Med school admissions can get actually really simple if you're world class at something. Remember, adcoms don't read, they scan your application. And at best, they can remember two, maybe three key things. If you have two things that are far above the pack, a lot of medical schools can ignore small weaknesses. Really honest truth, number seven, it's all your fault. You will not accidentally trip and fall into a white coat, especially not if you want to take no gap year and get into a top 20 school. Yes, there are many things outside of your control, your socioeconomic status, your privilege or lack thereof, your perspective on the world. Don't forget there are many things inside your control and people just like you or even worse off than you have made their doctor dreams come true. So you can do it too, but you must accept that everything, your grades, your extracurriculars, your opportunities, your physical and mental health, whether they go well or whether they go poorly, it's always your fault. Really honest truth, number eight. Were you listening to me, Neo? There's a scene in The Matrix where Morpheus is leading Neo through the crowd, explaining how we are all stuck in this false reality. It's very important Neo understands, but he gets distracted by this woman in the red dress. And Morpheus pauses, then he asks, were you listening to me, Neo? Or are you looking at the woman in the red dress? Neo then turns around and actually it's an agent with a gun pointed towards his head. While the pre-med journey is nowhere near as dramatic, every year I see competitive pre-meds throw it all away on the same distractions. There's a 3.95 GPA pre-med who insists on putting in 20 to 30 extra hours per week just so they can get to 3.99. All the while, their extracurriculars and letters of recommendations fall by the wayside. There's a pre-med with leadership positions in fantastic clubs that do great work in the community who decides to leave it all behind just so they can found a new club and become the president. Or even better, start a nonprofit, spend six months searching for an executive board and make a website. That's the wrong move, it's a distraction. Adcoms want depth and impact sustained over long periods of time. They don't care if your GPA is 3.99 instead of 3.92, and they don't care if you have the fancy president title or co-founder of a nonprofit, especially if it did nothing. Distractions feel safe because they're exciting, they're new, they're sexy. But in reality, that's just a woman in the red dress. Brutally honest truth number nine, it never gets easier. Studying on the weekends for the SAT was hard. That all-nighter to write that essay for college, that was even harder. Step one during medical school will be even harder. 24-hour shifts, taking care of real sick patients at 3 a.m., that's gonna be the hardest. It never gets easier. You just get stronger. Really honest truth, number 10. Perfectionists are lazy amateurs. Perfection is the greatest scam in history. Everyone chases it, no one ever reaches it, but for some reason, it's become an acceptable excuse. I've learned that the best pre-meds aren't actually the perfect ones. They're the most consistent, most reliable, most vulnerable, and most coachable ones. Perfectionists aren't disciplined. They're actually just afraid to make mistakes. If you like this video, you'll love this one here about what the 10 hard truths I wish I knew when I started my pre-med journey. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.